Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Councillor Susie Horton. I'm the Cabinet Member for Children, Families and Education. Uh, please be assured that we've put the appropriate cleansing and social distancing measures in place to ensure that this meeting is undertaken in a COVID secure manner. <clears throat> Um, public seating has been made available and the meeting is also being webcast um, to allow the public to view remotely if they wish to do so. Um, the public seating area is not in view of the camera used to webcast this meeting. A little bit of housekeeping safety information. If the continuous fire alarm sounds, please evacuate the room and public gallery by the stairwells. Don't attempt to use the lifts and assemble at Queen Victoria's statue in Guildhall Square. Um, and in order to comply with the Guildhall Trust's fire marshal regulations, anyone who signed in, please sign out when you leave the building. Um, the meeting, as I said, will be live streamed and everyone speaking will be on camera. Um, and please can everyone use the microphones and remember to switch them off when they've finished. Okay, I'll do some introductions, starting with you. Um, Councillor Tom Coles, I'm the Labour Opposition Spokesperson for the Portfolio and I represent Fratton Ward. Welcome. Hi, I'm Angela Mann, I'm Finance Manager for Children, Families and Education. Hi, Sarah Daly, Director for Children, Families and Education. Sam Bushby, Deputy Director for Children and Families. Yeah, Mike Stoneman, Deputy Director, Education. Welcome to all the officers too. So, um, I believe that the apology has been sent from Councillor uh, Terry Norton, um, who is on holiday. So, I'll move straight on to item two, which is a declaration of members' interest, which is um, uh, our normal one. So, I'll start off first, Tom, um, which is uh, I am Vice Chair of Governors at Craneswater Junior School. Uh, I'm on the Academy Advisory Board for Penhale and Newbridge. Thank you. So, uh, with no further ado, we will move on to item three, which is an update on the Education Capital Programme, which I believe um, Mike is presenting today. Yep, I'm going to cover that one today. Thank you. Um, okay, so this report um, provides an update on the implementation of our Education Capital Programme. Um, it covers four main areas. One is around the SEND accommodation strategy. The other is around basic need. We also have a section on uh, schools building condition projects in relation to our LA maintained schools. And then there's a, a section also on the school rebuilding programme. And finally, um, a small section on the replacement of our education case management system. And what I'll do is I'll just briefly run through each of those um, in terms of a summary. So on the SEND accommodation strategy, section three, 3.1, um, we cover there um, uh, a summary of the current funding that we have available for the SEND accommodation strategy. Uh, we've also just highlighted there the fact we have um, put in an expression of interest um, for a special free school, 16 to 19. Um, the, the paper there is obviously sets out the deadline of the 11th of July, that which is now passed, and just to confirm that, that expression of interest has gone in. Um, we also provide an update on some of the key projects, so that's Penhale, Flying Bull and Cliffdale. I'm not going to go into the detail, but you can see uh, that we're on track for those projects. Um, we also have some inclusion capital grants of up to £10,000 for mainstream schools to support uh, our inclusive uh, agenda for SEND and a further round of grants will be made available to schools uh, from the autumn term 2022. Um, we provide a summary of some disability adaptations, which is around Castleview Secondary Academy, and then uh, finally some um, condition works that we're doing at Craneswater, um, and also the works we're now taking forward at Arundel Court Primary Academy in terms of uh, uh, a new inclusion centre there. Um, so that's a very brief update on our SEND accommodation strategy. If I now turn to 3.2, which is basic need sufficiency, we've set out there um, where we are in terms of secondary places, uh, bear in mind at primary we have now starting to see some surplus having expanded those schools uh, in the past. But for secondary we are largely there, uh, we're, we're certainly okay for 22-23, but we are 
we are going to have to create just a few additional places to deal with the bulge that we're expecting in 23, 24, 24, 25. Um, and um, we've provided a brief summary there around the additional works we're doing at Milton Cross Academy to cope with that particular bulge, and that, that is uh, on track. Um, section 3.3 deals with school building condition works. This is in relation to our LA maintained schools. And you can see there um, details of those projects that we're taking forward. Uh, and, and some of which are, are being going to be completed by September 22. That's Portsdown, Cumberland and Medina. Uh, there are also some additional works at Craneswater Annex, uh, which we've got planned. Um, some minor works at the Harbour School at Tipner, which we're doing in conjunction with Delta Education Trust to um, um, address uh, urgent uh, um, condition issues in relation to windows um, and doors. Um, and then also we've just set out there just the latest round of um, uh, condition improvement fund uh, projects which uh, Academy Trust have bid for and you can see there are five schools which have benefited, well four, four schools but two, two projects at Cliftdale which have benefited from that programme. In section 3.4 we've just covered the school re rebuilding programme so two projects just to mention, there's the Mayfield School which Obviously, the school has been rebuilt now, but there are still some additional works that have to take place, uh, namely the demolition of the, of the old school and, and making that, that, that area good, and that is on track for November 2022. And then Beacon View Primary Academy, we've been looking uh, at um, potentially uh, developing part of the land that uh, Beacon View is on um, to create uh, an area for housing, but also then to improve the um, play facilities at, at Beacon View Primary Academy. That's at feasibility stage at the moment, but we've set out uh, the next steps that we would have to, to do to, to conclude that work. And then finally, in 3.5, we've just uh, highlighted the replacement of the education case management system and the fact that we've now completed the procurement exercise. Um, the preferred uh, organisation we're now going with is Serverlac, although now known as the Access Group, um, and moving to a new system called Synergy, and we've got us or 18 to 24 month project ahead of us to uh, complete that piece of work. But again, that's on track um, for completion within the next two years. And that is very briefly a summary of the update. Happy to take any questions. Thanks very much, Mike. Tom, do you have any questions? Um, yeah, it's just under 3.1.5. It says for Penhale Infant that it was completed September 22. That Should that read 21? Just to... That's a fair point, because we did complete the original project in September 21. I'm trying to think if it's an additional piece of work. But otherwise, it's yeah, no, that's that, I'll I'll check that one, Tom. But you're right. I'm I'm always happy to see a uh, yeah. an increase in send provision. Um, so it's a great report again as well. Thank you. Yeah, I'll check that one. Thank you, Tom. I think there was one classroom, and then there was an additional classroom. That's true. Yes, yeah, so we got eight, and then an additional eight. So that, yeah, that's I think we went. Yeah, I think 21 yeah. was when yeah. we went to that opening, and then I think there was an additional eight, which is this one. But no, no, that's right. That's yeah. exactly what, what's happened. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Good project anyway. Excellent. Rainbow Fish Centre. Um, thanks, Mike. Um, as I say, good, good report. Um, and also worth stating that we're still managing to move forward with these capital projects, notwithstanding the increases in costs and all the other challenges, particularly over the last couple of years around completing them. But we're still committed to um, providing high quality uh, special needs accommodation and as well as obviously looking at the sufficiency but um, they're still ambitious and still and still looking for opportunities to make sure that those that inclusion agenda is remains high on our priorities so I will go through the recommendations for the sake of the meeting just to clarify so um, note that um, the council has been allocated a further high needs provision capital allocation of 5.8 million for 22 to 24. That will be spent. <laughs> um, to note the invite from the uh, DfE to submit applications for new free schools and the council's response. Um, to note the um, progression on the accommodation for special educational needs projects and the schemes agreed um, since the last report. To note the progress of the sufficiency schemes and the conditions projects for the LA, t LA maintained schools and to note that the council will be supporting the application to the DFE to carry out a land transfer at Beacon View Primary um, Academy um, in 
in parallel with that feasibility work and to note the progress of the replacement of the education case management system project. Okay, thank you very much. So that is item three completed. Um, item four is the school attendance and reducing exclusions and the focus on relational practice. And are you, are you picking this up as well, Mike? I've got to cover that as well, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so this report covers um, the work we are doing to um, effectively take forward the uh, implementation of the strategy to improve school attendance and reduce exclusions, but in particular a strand around relational practice. And this follows a report that went to Schools Forum um, uh, seeking a, a three-year commitment from the DSG carry forward uh, to support um, that particular strand. But if I just take you through now the sort of uh, summary of that, um, and the background is contained in section three, which is what I'm going to go through now. So firstly, um, as we set out there, we have a citywide strategy in place uh, to improve school attendance and reduce exclusions, or what is now referred to as suspensions. That was approved by the PEP Strategic Board last year. Um, a particular strand uh, within that strategy is around uh, relational practice, which is building on the previous work we did in terms of restorative practice in schools and across the children's or wider workforce. Um, and we commenced uh, last year um, a relational practice program um, involving several schools in, in what we call a first wave. So 17 of our 61 schools were involved in that, um, with uh, work being led by the Sultan's Academy Trust, where we have a, a standout school, Trafalgar in terms of how they've embedded a relational practice within that school. But we have a number of other schools um, who uh, are in a sort of similar position to, to Trafalgar. Um, but we want now to extend that across the city. So uh, wave one commenced, that is been very successful uh, and continues. And now what we want to do is to build on that uh, work and to extend it across the whole of the city over the next three years um, to ensure all schools have an opportunity to participate in the relational practice program. Um, this report effect effectively is, there ask is therefore asking uh, for Cabinet member approval to, to approve this commitment of £530,000 over three calendar years, which will commence in January 23, um, to support more waves, at least three more, um, in 23, 24 and 25, as well as continued support for those schools that have been involved in each of those waves. Um, we set out a breakdown of those costs in, in the Schools Forum report um, and the detail uh, in terms of the rationale, uh, the reasons for those recommendations are also contained in that report that went to Schools Forum, um, which is included in Appendix, Appendix 3. But happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mike. Tom, do you have any questions or comments? Um, yeah, it all looks, all looks good, I think. Um, again, same provisions in there, and homeschooling as well, which is something I was looking out for. Um, uh, but yeah, happy, happy with everything that's in there, really. It's a great report. Thank you so much. I, I actually think this is probably the most excited I've been about um, a, a report that's come to my decision-making um, meeting, and more happy because it comes with the endorsement from Schools Forum, because actually this, this doesn't work unless schools are really on board. And that robust discussion around deci the decision to, to use that um, DSG money um, is really heartening to me because it just shows that that wave one um, work that, that sort of disseminated across the city is really landing well. And although this comes under a kind of um, agenda item that talk, talks about attendance and reducing exclusions, which is absolutely crucial, it's so much bigger than that. It's around the curriculum, it's around the way we treat people in school, it's the way we engage with parents and it's, I am r really optimistic about the impact that this can have on the widest relationships that we possibly can have in schools which we know are at the heart of our communities and then when those relationships are good and children are in school and enjoying learning then I am cautiously optimistic that the that our outcomes will will follow suit but actually this is we need to go back to these basics to be able to challenge those other those other issues so really really excited about this so and delighted um, to be able to um, you know um, approve this commitment of um, 530,000 from the DSG carry forward to to 
to roll forward with the next waves of this project. And also, um, the second thing is applying to that disapplication to the Secretary of State. So, yeah, and just worth noting that that you know it will it will be subject to that dis yeah. disapplication request, which we are taking forward, and we will submit uh, shortly. But um, uh, you know, I'm relatively optimistic that that will be approved. But it is subject to that process. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. Excellent. <clears throat> okay, so item five is a Children, Families and Education Portfolio Budget Monitoring Report for the financial year end 2021-2022. Angela, over to you. Thank you. So the report covers the revenue and capital budgets as at the end of the financial year 21-22. The overall revenue um, outturn was a 4.4 million overspend, of which just under two million pounds was due to COVID-19 pressures, um, which there was a corporate provision um, separately to cover those costs. Um, the report um, covers more detail in section five. Um, the non-COVID overspend was due to an overspend on children's social care of just under 2.8 million and this was due to the pressures in residential placements, the care leavers service and, and unaccompanied asylum seekers care leaver budgets and there was an underspend in education of um, just over £300,000 to slightly offset that. In terms of the COVID-19 um, spend, um, this was covering increased costs for home to school transport, um, which provided additional routes to try and prov um, provide um, some um, social distancing and to keep people in bubbles. Um, there was the delays to the introduction of the family safeguarding service when COVID started and there was still the impact for last year. Um, and then there was um, there was a significant amount of spend on staffing in different areas as a result of COVID-19, which is detailed in the report. And finally, there was also um, additional costs um, in residential um, due to um, delays in reunification as a result of the pandemic. Um, for the capital programme, this is a long-term um, strategy and um, at the end of the financial year, it was projected to break even. And I'm happy to um, take any questions. Many thanks, Angela. Any questions or comments? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not the most financially astute sort of person, so I struggle with these sort of numbers. But <laughs> um, I mean, COVID was a bit of an impact on everything, really. So it's good to see we're working on getting that balance back out. And there's nothing I can see in there that I disagree with. So. Thank you, Tom. I think it's just worth saying that the the, the challenges um, before COVID were exacerbated and um, enlarged by COVID. So COVID had a massive impact. But it is worth saying here now that the, the, the things that are beyond our control in some ways around the high cost placements are putting us in a really, really, really difficult position. And it's not just us here in Portsmouth, it's across the country. But that is a reality and we need to safeguard children. That's the most important thing that we need to do. And all the time that the government is not tackling that issue, then we will be faced with these um, eye-watering overspends. Um, We've had a really good discussion this morning around what the budget looks like when you when you mitigate against that and actually we do some really really good and successful work which needs to be um seen in a really positive light rather than just within this this kind of climate of overspends around high cost placements so um it's it's a serious situation. We take it seriously. We'll evaluate it. But we know where those overspends are coming from. OK. So if there's no other comments, um, I will find my place. And it's a, it's a report for noting. So I do note um, the revenue and capital outturn positions for last year's financial year, um, together, most importantly, with the variance explanations. Okay, so on to item six, which is the local authority of maintained schools balances as of the 31st of March. Um, who is that Angela again? Back over to you. 
Thank you. So this is the annual report to Cabinet Member on the year-end position of maintained schools, revenue and capital balances. Um, and this is for the year ending the 31st of March 2022. Uh, section 4 details the year-end um, position of the revenue balances. And the second table shows those balances overall have decreased by just under 0.4 million. Whilst the majority of schools have seen an increase, seven schools saw a decrease in balances, three of which have balances in excess of 10% of their budget share and are not of concern. One has seen a reduction of less than 25% and is being monitored as part of regular school meetings. Um, and the remaining three have been contacted and actions are detailed in the report. In addition to those um, schools reducing balances, the report also looks at those schools with excessive balances. At the um, end of the year, two schools had um, um, uncommitted balances in excess of 20% of their budget share, and the schools have been contacted. For the capital balances, these are detailed in Section 6 of the report and there has been an increase in the capital balances and this relates to um, a large capital project being undertaken by one of the secondary schools. Um, I'm happy, to, um, so that's the end of the report, there's lots of de detail in there and I'm happy to um, take any questions. Thank you, Angela. Do you have any questions or comments? I, th I think I mentioned it in the briefing but it was just about the school that's produced a recovery plan about what stage that's at with being reviewed by the authority and uh, what progress being made on that. Um, so I, I, I am I probably need to get back to you um, because of course we was um, we've had um, the end of the term so I'm, I'm not sure I know they detailed something and there was just some queries that we had and wanted to make sure that they'd um, taken everything into account so we were going back um, but I can then find out and, um, and, and let you know um, but it might be that it has to wait until September when everybody's back now from um, their leave. Oh, thank you, yeah, I'll, I'm happy, to, happy to, to wait to hear from you, it's fine, thanks. I think, I think that's... Um... I think that's a fair comment, but I think what's really um, important in this report is that those those conversations are robust, and um, I think we're still probably suffering from the the kind of the, the tale of the lockdown and everything, where spending money was um, bizarrely difficult and <laughs> in many ways, and um, and actually we're out of that pattern around schools looking where their budget, where they're saving up for particular projects and everything. But I think it's a, a fair question and I'm sure Angela will get back to you, um, Tom, with that information. Okay, so um, this is a report just informing us of the um, LA maintained schools revenue and capital balances and I duly note it. Which leads us on to the third and final finance type report, um, item seven, which is the DSG outturn 21-22. Back to Angela. Thank you. So um, again, this is an annual report um, that's updating cabinet member on the outturn position for the dedicated schools grant um, for the financial year 21-22. Um, the year-end position was an underspend of 3.4 million, um, the majority of which relates to funding for pupils with education, health and care plans in mainstream schools, special schools, alternative provision and out-of-city placements. And the reasons for those are detailed in section 9 of the report. Included in the underspend is an approved planned underspend of 0.4 million pounds which relates to the growth fund and the school specific contingency for use in 2022-23 um, which like I say was planned because we knew we didn't need it um, in 21-22. Um, there were budget adjustments in February 2022 for the early years block um, there is an spend of 0.3 million and that's included in the underspend and is carried forward and we're expecting there to be a reduction in funding following the adjustments for the January 2022 20, census. 
Section 10 sets, the, sets out the movement in the carry forward balance and the proposed use of the carry forward for 22-23. Um, and the balance available for use is in Table 6, and that would reduce to 3.3 million if the proposals that um, Mike outlined in Item 4 is approved by the Secretary of State. And I'm happy to um, take any questions on this report. Many thanks, Senator. No, I think we're used to DSG uh, reports. It's just back to that, that age-old thing about different timelines, isn't it? Particularly around early years and getting that sense of stuff and then into that. And I'm always reminded of how quickly that carry forward can be reduced. And um, I think we are a, we're in a healthy position, but we, we have a really good relationship with Schools Forum um, who, who challenge us on that. And actually, we, we work together on this about using that money in the most prudent and sensible way possible whilst trying to get as much of it out into schools. And I feel very confident about that process working well. So are there any other comments or anything from anyone? So thank you for that. That's another noting report, isn't it? So that's the dedicated schools grant outturn 21-22. And I duly note that. So if there's no other questions or comments, um, that comes to the end of our agenda. So thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you to officers for your reports and your time today. And thank you, Councillor Coles, for your questions. And we will stop the meeting. Thank you.